I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Sherry. And this is our cat, Lily. This is Cinder. We've got the truck. We've got the trailer. And we're ready for our RV travel class. Good morning, RV travel buddies. This is Rob and... This is Sherry. We are going to our next destination. So we're starting to get away from the west coast. It's been kind of soggy, but nice. Been a few nice days. Uh, leaving the seaside and we're starting to head inland to Central Oregon. We're not going over Mount Hood because it's unpredictable weather. But uh, it's actually kind of clear, but we're going to do Highway 26, which is a little bit of a pass, no problem there. We'll do that. And then we'll hit the Portland area. Then we'll get on I-84, I heading towards uh, Central Oregon. On the Columbia River. Along the Columbia River between Washington and Oregon. That way we avoid the pass. So it's a little longer, but safer, and it's all about safety. So we're on our way, keep it, we'll keep in touch, we'll show you the things we see, and start showing you the different things we start seeing. The, the region change to desert, and a lot of pretty things, and we're looking forward to showing you stuff from Central Oregon. So, we're off and running, bye. Hello RV travel buddies, we're, uh, over the Highway 26, made it to the Portland area, the land of all the bridges. And uh, so now we're on I-84, following the gorge. So if we didn't have enough, I'll have to tell you my story later, but we didn't have enough excitement trying to get through the passes, which was white knuckle. Now I gotta deal with gust. And so I can't do this update too long because I'm right along the Columbia, and it's already beating the heck out of me. But all is well. Uh, I think uh, we'll have to kind of see what, how far we get in the next hour or two to decide where we're going to stop. So anyway, I guess the big thing is today has been a lot of obstacles between construction and uh, windy roads, bad roads. Now I gotta deal with the gusts, and this could be, you have to really be on your toes. So anyway, talk to you later, bye. This is Rob and Sherry's here with us and it's been a long drive and I'm kind of breaking my own rule a little bit but we're gonna go the full length trip today which is about driving eight hours close so we went from Seaside Oregon down to Biggs coming up the hillside into Central Oregon which uh, will come through Madras and uh, Terrebonne and Redmond area and we have a place that we stay with her folks that on their property and maybe because we're anxious that's our old hometown and it's a great place for cinder and our pets and, um, it's our old home so we're kind of probably excited. excited a little bit yeah so it's once again it's central oregon which is we see blue skies already no rain it gets cold but it's our old home and we miss it. So we're going to do the whole drive today. So I don't recommend that to people, but um, we're, we're feeling good. We're not tired. This is a fairly easy drive once we got past Portland. So keeping, keeping all those in mind, it's like I, I don't mind doing this drive. But guys, don't do long drives if you don't have to. And when we get to Central Oregon, we're kicking back for two, three weeks. So we're, uh, it's not set up and go, set up and go, set up and go. 
we're gonna smell the roses. But anyway, we'll show you more as we go. Talk to you later. Bye. You wanna say goodbye? Bye. We need to stop to get fuel at Madras, and, and I've told you before that we like to uh, shop at Safeway because I get discounts on my gas. Well, I haven't used it for a while, and I had uh, six points, which is 60 cents off. So we're filling up, and I didn't even really check the price. We saw the pump was pumping at 89 cents a gallon. I'll repeat that, 89 cents a gallon, so 25 gallons. I got for 89 cents, which is, oh my gosh, that was amazing. And in the regular price, I went ahead and topped off after that, it was $1.49 a gallon. So, and this is diesel I'm talking about. So that was amazing. So it's getting kind of dark. I know it's probably hard to see. And we'll be pulling into uh, Central Oregon pretty soon here. And then I'm gonna find some time tonight and I'm gonna tell you my little story about the exhaust brakes that coming down the mountain. We had a pretty serious thing happen where it's pretty kind of scary and I wanna pass it on. So, all right, talk to you in a bit, bye. Alrighty, this is my story and I'm sticking to it. So what I wanted to tell you about at the end of this video was we were coming down Highway 26, um, going towards Portland and my truck has exhaust brakes so how that works is it basically blocks the exhaust and when you're at a high um, RPMs helps hold the truck back um, and uses compression because diesels are just that way anyway rule one is and you have compression brakes or exhaust they call it on a motor homes and other places like that well <laughs> other other motor homes other trucks have that too mine might be a little different but if your rpms are down like if you're idling and turned on your exhaust brake my engine will stall so we're coming down the mountain and there's construction going on and we're going down quite a steep hill and i start trying to brake and i Two mistakes I made was one is I should have set my brakes tighter on the trailer because it would have helped slow us down faster so I was putting pretty a lot of um, pressure on the brakes to slow down so as I'm slowing down I also got the exhaust brake on which so my engine went down to an idle even though we're still going 30 or 40 miles per hour and during that time the engine stalled and there's cars down the road for me so that's another reason why you always want to keep space between other rigs so my brakes they were gone there was nothing there was no power so luckily I've had that happen once a long time ago and I something just told me right in the top of my head I needed to switch over to neutral while I'm in momentum here start the engine and which is what I did and everything came back on but I was hammering them brakes by the time I got to the cars ahead of me and stopped uh, I my brakes were smoking <laughs> so you can bet I was laying it on pretty heavy so um, I already had shoes down lower than they should I mean the new of course on my front brakes I pretty much think I shot the brakes on the front um, and and they squeal now and they're pulling so there there's a Les Schwab trip coming up here in the next day or so but uh, I guess a couple of lessons learned one is make sure you do that I mean it's alright to check your brakes on the trailer make sure they're working electric the electric brakes but also make sure you have them as stiff as you want them to be uh, obviously having them stiffer during going down passes and stuff is ideal uh, th then you're putting more pressure on your trailer brakes than on your truck. And the second thing is exhaust brakes. Um, in some cases, I'm not sure what it is with other vehicles, but you got to pay attention that you got to have your RPMs up. Your engine's got to be running at a high, or high um, or high gear, um, 
low gear actually so the compression holds you back so anyway scary oh my gosh so that's my story i'm sticking to it lessons learned i hope it helps others they just keep that in mind this applies to trailers and motorhomes with exhaust brakes so from rv travel quest i'm rob thank you for watching please take the time to subscribe and share our videos and we really do appreciate you so thanks bye now